So in front of me now, I've got four lap joints. The corner lap joint, the T-lap joint, the obtuse lap joint, and the cross lap joint. All very basic and very easy once you master the basics of a bandsaw. The next one, and the final one in the halved joint section, or the lap joint section, is the dovetailed lap joint. Now, it is very similar to the T-joint, with the exception you've got a dovetail in here instead of a straight bit of timber. Now to do this, you do need a bandsaw that has a table that will move or tilt both ways, this way and that way. And if you don't, I'm sure you can make a carriage up, but if you do, this is how you do a dovetailed lap joint. Next is the halved lap dovetail joint, or the half lap dovetail joint, if you prefer. And that goes that way, and we cut a dovetail here. Now, bearing in mind, you need a table that will drop both outwards and inwards to do this one. I'm using the Laguna BX14, and it drops this way and that way. Now, you have to know what angle it will drop to on the inboard side. And I know this one drops at eight degrees, so what I've done is I've set it all up so the dovetail joint will be an eight degree fall on the tail itself. In order to do this joint and make it easier, I've got a template here that's cut with an eight degree slant on it and I've got double sided tape with some wet and dry 240 grit to hold it in place. To set it out, it's much the same as a half lap. The only difference is you actually follow the pencil mark on all four sides of the block you're cutting. And that will become evident as we go ahead. So I've marked it on that face, on that edge, that face, and that edge. I've got this piece of plywood here with an eight degree fall on it. And the way I cut the dovetail is I place this up against the fence. And by the way, that's got some 240 grit wet and dry abrasive paper on there to act as a bit of a, a grip. And then I position this block right on the corner of this slide that I've created. So the corner of the block of wood is lined up with the blade there. And then just follow it through to this line. Flip it 180 degrees, take it up to the same point and push through again. And that's created the dovetail. Now we just square these ends off. Get your box back in there, set it 90 degrees. Put that to one side for the moment and then cut on the inside, the inside of this line. Turn it over and do the same on the other side. There's the dovetail. Get the female part of the component. Place it on the edge, like so, with the shoulders just up against this edge here. And with a pencil, mark it in. 
Now I also carry these marks over to the top edge. And the bottom, the thinnest part of the dovetail, I move that line. I'll come in about two mil or eighth of an inch or something, and then I'll continue that line all the way through like that on both sides and also over the top. And that will become apparent when we do the cut. Get the angle on the table, wind the guides up. And there's two ways you can do it. You can either drop the table and use a bevel, or in my case it's easier, I use a digital angle finder and pull it down until I get the right degrees. I now know this slope is eight degrees and I know when I go back the other way, my stop is set at eight degrees. Bring the guide block down. Make sure that this clears the guide block on this edge. And that's the setup. But before we actually cut, we have to mark here how far we're cutting in, which again should be half the thickness of this timber. However, I prefer to cut this one first and then I will trim this one secondly. It should be the same, but if it's a little bit out, it's far easier to redo this joint than to redo this joint. If it's hard to see like it is in this blonde timber, just put a pencil mark down there and you'll see it. Line it up so the blade will just cut on the inside of the line. Then you go into the depth of your marking gauge. Like so. A little bit out here, but that's okay. We can clean that up with the chisel. Now this other line I drew here to here is to remove the waste and I'll show you how. I can confidently cast, cut the waste slots along here to this point and then I can remove the waste easily. Now I've taken that amount up, I'll switch the table around and do this cut here. And that should line up quite nicely with that line. And then come back the other way. And there I've cleared most of the waste out, which I can just get rid of with my fingers. Again, I'm going to have to clean that up with a chisel. Now that this has been cleaned up, I've just got to cut the half lap joint here. So it'll marry into that and be nice and flush. Again, with the marking gauge, describe a line down the centre. Then set the saw up. And then just cut down to that line. Put it in the box. Take out the waste. And there's a half lap dovetail going into the housing. 
And there it is, finished. Okay, so in front of me, there's five half lap joints, which can be used for um, a variety of different situations. If you're making a door, if you're doing lattice work, if you're doing uh, a cross member, if you're doing um, style and rail in the door and you're going to hang panels in there, sometimes you can use this joint. Right, that's it for the half laps. Now, move on to the next section, and the next section is bridle joints. <laughs>